Hello, and welcome to another edition of Spoken Voices. We hope everyone is doing well. We hope everyone is doing fine and being healthy. On this episode, we have a special guest. And if you like the theme music of when our show starts, we finally get a chance to introduce the person who was nice enough to let us use his music for our theme. And I'd like to introduce everybody to Mr. Steve Clark. Uh, thank you for having me, man. Steve? It's good to be back. I know. Yes. It's been a while, right? <laughs> yes, it has it's been, been a, while. a long while. What is it, about two years? <clears throat> I think At least. the last time you guys were here? At least. Yeah, so. With, with Jenna. And we, we talked to Jenna the last time, so we didn't get a chance to speak to the band, and we didn't get a chance to speak to you. Mm -hmm. So I want you to let everybody know who you are, what you do. And because, guys, let me tell you right now, this, this dude can play the bass. Oh. But I'm going to let him talk about himself. I ain't going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to talk about me playing the bass, though. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so let anybody know who you are, Steve. No, Steve Clark, and I'm from uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, you know, born and raised. And uh, I've been playing music probably uh, over 40 years. And kind of from a musical family. My dad played. Uh, I had an older brother that played. Had, uh, other brothers that played in drum corps, uh -huh. so there was music going on in the house of all kinds, uh -huh. all the time. Okay, and so, so, yeah. so, like you said, you have a almost a legacy of music since you were little, right? Since I was little, I always there was always music going on. Uh -huh. What part type. of British British? What? The Hollow. Okay, I lived in, uh, Jones I, Avenue. I used to live on Stratford Avenue. Oh, when I was little. Then we moved over to that area. We yeah. moved down Fourth Street. Oh, okay. Okay. My sister still lives in the house there. Okay. So. Yeah, but that was, man, that was back in the 60s. Uh -oh. So I'm old. Uh -oh. hey, <laughs> Let's not go there. No, I'm not, I'm I'm not even going to go there. there. <laughs> so, so what have you been doing? I always ask the people that come on, especially those who have to travel and stuff. Man, how have you been making out in this uh, virus situation that we're um, going through? I've been, I've been surviving. First, let's say that... Uh, my heart goes out to all the people, who, the families that lost people. Who, of course. Of this uh, unfortunate and surprise for the world because of course. it took us by surprise. Yeah. And like most people, mm -hmm. at the beginning of it, everybody was just like, what is going on? Right. And glued to the TV. Mm hmm But I managed to get through it, you know. Right. And uh, there was ups and downs and there was good parts of it as well, mm -hmm. you know, because I could say prior to that, you know, I play as a freelance musician, so I'm playing with different bands all the time. Okay. Like every couple of weeks, I'm, I'm meeting new musicians and playing with bands, and just one time hit and psh, I'm gone, you know, uh -huh. the bass player couldn't make it. Right. And uh, that year prior, I did 411 wow. gigs, you know. Wow. And that's the most I ever did, and that's okay. like, whew. So after that, when the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. and I was sitting back relaxing unconsciously, you know, I'm mm -hmm. like, wow. So this is what life is like, you know, because I'm, I'm so used to just like hit and run and right, hit and right. run and hit and run. Just so, every day, I, you know, I would hit and run so and two you, times a day. Did it give you time to sit down and compose and write and stuff like that, or did you? Uh, it, it did. It gave me time to do all of the above, as well as, you know, analyze myself as much work as I was doing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do. Right, okay. I mean, but I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, I'm deciding, now, I don't want to do that much. Things are turning around, and I'm right back in the groove. I'm just like, okay, you know, it, it's just part of me. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. So, so is it picked back up for you now? Oh, it's picking back up. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now I know that you've been overseas. Yes. How, how was that, man? That was the blessing. That, that was it. Okay. Yeah, that's living the dream. We went over. I go over myself, and uh, I hire musicians from there. I have a keyboard player from Austria and a drummer from Germany. Okay. And um. We played 25 shows mm -hmm. back to back in five different countries mm -hmm. and all of our original music and a couple of cover songs. Okay. So that was like living the dream for 25 days and 25 hotels, yep. you know, because so, mm -hmm. we're going town to town. Right. And uh, people have to realize too over there when you're going from a country to a country, it's almost like going from a state to a state here. Yes. 
mm -hmm. because we, we covered five countries and we probably didn't go further from here, from Connecticut to DC, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, mm -hmm. you know, five different countries. Yeah. So it was awesome. Uh, the people there are more obedient with uh, the vaccine, mm -hmm. being vaccinated, mm -hmm. wearing masks, and you had to be vaccinated and wear a mask to get in. Okay. I mean, halfway through the show, most people had the mask off, mm -hmm. you know. But so the numbers over there are, are better over there. Okay. The countries are smaller, but the numbers are better because people are taking the vaccine mm -hmm. and wearing masks. You know what's amazing to me is that because um, my father uh, used to, he was a jazz guy. Oh, sweet. So I got. I got the opportunity to listen to Miles and Theodis Monk, yeah, and the old dudes. And it's back. Yeah. I hated it when I when I was growing up because I I used to be me as well, right? <laughs> My brother was like, "Check this out, he's playing, I, I, yeah. <laughs> playing these records." I used and... to wake up on a Saturday morning and my dad would be blasting this stuff, right? And I'd be like, "Oh man, I want to hear I want to hear something else. I want to hear Smokey uh, Robinson, yeah, and, yeah, you know, and whatnot." But then after I got older, I realized, yo, this music is this is yeah, some yeah. deep stuff it was key, and yeah. whatnot. And it was the music of that time too. Right. You know, along with the R and B. I remember hearing as I got older and looking at old clips of Miles and the rest of those dudes and, and Cannonball and all those guys and mm -hmm. they went dizzy, especially Dizzy. Oh, okay. Gillespie. Because he would go overseas a lot. Yes. And back in the day, mm -hmm. right, it was easier for them and more freer. It was freer, yeah. For us. They to, were more appreciated. Yeah, to play. Yeah. I remember my dad actually told me he was in the Korean War, so he was stationed in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I remember him talking to my mom and us and whatnot, and he talked about how easy it was and how the music was great and how people treated him so good in Germany, mm -hmm. but he had to come back here, you know. My and, sentiments, I was like, woof, coming yeah. on a plane is like. Phew. Ain't that crazy? Wow. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? Why do you think there is such, to me, it seems like it's more appreciation for the music that you play. Right? There is. Over there than it is here. And there's very few, unless I'm mistaken, mm -hmm. artists, young artists, that's playing jazz now as opposed um, to. Oh, well, of course, yeah. There's a lot less than there was back yeah. in the 50s and 60s. Why do you think that is? Um, because the music is uh, probably not treated as an art, mm -hmm. which it is. And. It's not played on the radio, nope. so people don't hear it, so mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't get a chance to hear it. That's right. And then when you mention jazz, it's like, ah, well, you know, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but now they're getting more appreciation because they're listening to what they call smooth jazz, which, and, is, which is like R&B yeah, without combo. singing, <laughs> without singing, and, uh -huh. you know. And it has the jazz elements to it because right. it's instrumental. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the players are really good, and yeah. they're, they're, you've got to hear them play jazz. They're, and they're good, but they don't play it because it's not marketable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we got, uh, there's a young kid called Joey Alexander. He's a pianist. Of course, I know. Right? Yeah. And he was a prodigy. Uh, For sure. He was playing when he was what? Like a month old? <laughs> yeah, probably. When I saw him, he was probably like six or seven, and it's right. like, well, he has to be a prodigy because. He, he didn't even have time to learn that. That's crazy, <laughs> but it's crazy. And, and he plays with a, a, with most of the time with, with just a bassist. Mm -hmm. It's him playing the piano. Mm -hmm. And I was always amazed by that. And, and But it also made me think, I'm saying, where are our young people, especially young black kids, right? Because mm -hmm. that's our music. Yes. The jazz is our music, mm -hmm. you know? And I was wondering, I said, wow, this is our different kids who can play, who are good musicians, why aren't they picking up yeah. the bass? Why aren't they picking up the saxophone? Why aren't they picking up something and saying, I want to do something different? Right. Even our singers, we have Gregory Porter. Oh, yeah. And, th and, and this is crazy. And yeah. I can think of Kirk Elling. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? And I'm <laughs> there's, thinking, there's who else There's very few. Yeah, there's very few. It, it, and I mean, there's that's thousands, crazy. but there's few. As, as a musician, <laughs> did you ever step back and say, you know, what, what happened to that, um, that, yeah, that I see bridge. it sometimes when, because the music that I play, like I went here to Europe and played 25 shows. Mm -hmm. I probably don't do 25 shows all year in the U.S. Mm. And I'm searching for it, and, but right. it's not accepted, you know. It's like you almost have to have a hit record or something yeah. out mm -hmm. to be on the festival. Right. So it's like, so it's not appreciated that way. And uh, actually over there they see it more as an art as well. 
and it's not even just jazz, because some of the places I play, I see the, the advertisements they have, and they have live music every night. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's jazz, it's rock, it's funk, it's right. blues, it's everything. Mm-hmm. So they just totally appreciate the, the art of the music and being performed live. Right. And I've always said, for me, and to look at a jazz musician, right, jazz itself as a genre, mm-hmm. right, you got to know what you're doing. Um, you know, to me, because I'm very sure you're an artist. Heck, you know when somebody's like faking the funk. You can <laughs> hear it, I'm assuming. But you have to really know your stuff because you can't hide behind anything, especially how they used to play where everybody gets a solo. Your yeah. turn. Yeah, yeah. What you got. It's pretty much just standard of the music yeah. that everyone will have to solo and yeah. you know, trade for. How good and, are you? you yeah, know? yeah. And the audience would, I remember seeing old film, the audience is bugging out on, on, on everybody yeah. that has that solo. Right. You know? And that's another thing with people that they don't come out to live shows, mm-hmm. but when they do, it's like, wow, mm-hmm. I like this. <laughs> you but know, that's because the you thing, have to, to see them, it live. To pull them to in. To get them right? in is, to pull is, them in is the and, and trick, whatnot. yeah. Oh, okay. My my producers asked me, wanted me to ask you something about your tour, more about your tour, and, and how that was, uh, how that kind of played out. And um, that played that played out well because you know the people were vaccinated, and mm-hmm. you know we'd have no sh- no shows canceled, and uh, it's all booked through a booking agent over there. Okay. And this is probably I don't know my 15th tour over there. Okay. And, and each one is just a little better than the last one. And the very first one was awesome, you know. Wow. So, how long did you stay? How long was it? The tour was 25 days. I uh-huh. was there for 26. We rehearsed one day. I got there. Wow. We rehearsed that day. The next day we went on tour. That's a lot of work. The last show, I got on the plane and came back. That's a lot of work, dude. But we don't see it like work because I, you know, that's what a, we dream it, to do. A, that's it, what we want to do. Affair. It's a love affair for sure. Yeah. And I love their love affair. Yeah. And they're booking for 2023 now. And you're going to be down with, yeah, oh, with that too, right? As far as I know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> as long as the good Lord take me there. I, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> to me, and I guess it has to be for an artist too, is that music itself, it's, it's so, for me, it's therapeutic. It is. And you I know. think every person should really learn how to play one song mm-hmm. on the piano, or basically, which is a little easier than you know every other instrument. Right. I'm not saying it's easy to play it, no, but it's easier imagine. to put together. Boom, and and hear both parts. Right. Which you can't. It's hard to do on bass and guitar and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You have to be a virtuoso. Yeah. <clears throat> but just to feel the feeling of how it feels to escape the reality and be involved in this mm-hmm. music. And I guarantee they would learn more than one song. Oh yeah, definitely. It, <laughs> they would it, go it, in. It's 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 addictive. Um, it is. I hear people all the time. I mean, I wish I stayed with my lessons. Mm-hmm. Go back. But even listening as as a, a person who can't play, mm-hmm. um, I Me. think I can sing. But whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> but you know, bring out a mic. Yeah, right. No, not today. Uh, <laughs> but. To sit down and listen, and, and for me, I can listen to a song and I hear everything. And I don't know whether that's a, a, a rare thing for someone to be able to sit down and hear every single instrument and yeah. be able to, you know, some, I swear, man, yeah, sometimes I can lose not, myself. I wouldn't in. say it's rare, but people just don't listen. No. If you sit there and listen, you everyone could hear it. Mm-hmm. What made you want to do bass, though? The one, what made Boy. you want to play bass? That's a story. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, actually, I wanted to play drums. Okay. I can always remember beating on stuff like that. Uh-huh. And unconsciously always humming the bass uh-huh. so I can keep the groove. Rhythm. The rhythm. Yeah. Yeah, going uh-huh. while I'm, you know, beating the drums. And I, you know, st- my first instrument I ever played, my mother got me lessons on, was uh-huh. an accordion. No. Exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> what was you playing, a polka? <laughs> What else was there? No. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, I could have stayed with it. It would have been right. unique. Uh, oh, it definitely would have been. Yeah, it would have been unique because well, they make a mini with now. The, with the accordion now. Yeah. But then, you know, I'm from a larger family. I have 
12 siblings. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the middle child. There's six older than me and there were six younger than oh, me. Oh wow, okay. So having uh, drums was not going to be, you know, an option. No. <laughs> Mm -mm. Space and noise. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that we take up. Mm -hmm. And uh, growing up, I guess I was in like sixth or seventh grade, and uh, across the street there was this guy always out playing music on his porch when we get out of school, and mm -hmm. I'd see him. And I went over to meet him one day because, you know, I was like totally interested. But he's playing guitar. Mm -hmm. And I became friends with him, and I started hanging around his house, and, you know, okay. his brother was a drummer, so I was like, oh, okay. And they had a little band, but I never got. Uh, his brother would always be late for rehearsal, so I'd okay. sit in and play drums. I was like, this is perfect. So I'm starting to learn drums and uh -huh. stuff like that. So I bought some drums and you know, I was getting into it. Uh -huh. Then they couldn't find a bass player. Okay. So the guy, well, he help us out with the rehearsal. You know? And I was like, okay. The, his brother was there to play the drums and I just played, you know, he showed me what to play on a bass and oh, I'm just okay. like a boom, 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 just holding right. it down. I couldn't play uh, nothing. <laughs> I didn't even know I was doing, I was holding up the responsibility of a bass player. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And later on I found out, you know, bass is a pretty responsible instrument. And I'm like, dude, I was just like, boom, boom. Uh -huh. And they're jamming like crazy. Right, they moving, right? <laughs> yeah, they're all doing off. And I, you know, I started doing it, and I was like, hmm, this mm -hmm. is pretty nice. And it, yeah. It, it's like being a drummer, mm -hmm. but with notes. Right, okay. You know, because the drummer and the bass are always locking together. Uh -huh. Everyone knows that, yes. you know, they become a team. And that's what they call it, the rhythm section. And that's the rhythm section, And yeah. everything has to, and I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. everything has to play w and keep up with them. And um, stay in that. Okay, you're wrong. No. Oh, no, 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 definitely. <laughs> Tell me. Well, everyone's responsible because when you're teaching music, a lot of people say, well, uh, who's responsible for the rhythm? And they always think that it's the drummer, the drummer, just the drummer. I thought it was the bass. <laughs> it's everybody's responsibility. Oh, okay, okay. Because if that's what separates the good musicians from the half. Ass. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> <I've asked. laughs> is the rhythm. Uh-huh. Because sometimes even if you play the bad notes, if you have the correct rhythm, you can keep the, the motion going. Okay. You know how they used to say that the the bass and the drums are like the engine of the, the band. They mm -hmm. keep the, the motion going. Right. So even if you keep the motion going and it feels really good and you're just like right in there, mm -hmm. it's good. A guitar player, if he has to start the song off, he has to be a ding 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 He's got to have the rhythm. Right. You know, so. Right, he has to stay. And he has to keep with the rhythm. So yeah. we're, we're all equally right. responsible. It's just that the <laughs> drums and the bass stand out more for laying it down. I, I love <laughs> Because that. we lay it down longer. I love asking musicians <laughs> this, right? When you're doing a set, right? When, <laughs> have you ever, have you ever kind of messed up? Oh. <laughs> Ever, <laughs> I still do, right? <laughs> at least once every gig. <laughs> does anybody? I mean, does the other band members like look at you and go, "What was uh, that?" Once in once in a while, but you know, <laughs> you, you know, do it. Uh, they do the same. Of every, course, everyone, you know, of because course. it's a, it's a focus, and you have to be focused from one end, to the, you know, from the beginning all the way to the end, mm -hmm. you know, of the night. Right. You know saying so, it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's not an easy task. Oh, I can't. And you know, dude. I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I cannot imagine. Yeah. Most As, people don't think about that or decide how much musicians have to be focused all right. the way through. Even though you know your instrument really well, you're still focused in parts and things you want to do. As somebody who, who, again, who likes to sing and whatnot, how important, when you're, when you're playing with a singer, like you mm -hmm. were playing with Jenna and stuff like that, do you follow her? Oh, we stay out of her way. We stay, uh, yeah, uh, you know That's what it's great to say that? That's what Did it you is. you kind of like just say, okay. We're laying sing, back because it's and all I'm about And I'm going to listen to what you're singing and play to it. You know, yeah. if it's something, especially if it's something they compose themselves as opposed to a something. Uh, yeah, than a cover song. Cover yeah, yeah. song, yeah. Well, you're always there just to support the singer. Yeah, okay. That, that's what it's all about in, mm -hmm. when you're backing up a singer. Did you ever see somebody like get ahead of the singer? <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, there's a few people, you know. <laughs> I know I'm bringing up some wild stuff, but I'm all, I, but, I was always but curious. But it's about all that. wild stuff that happens. It happens, yeah. uh, you know, a lot. 
Yeah. You know, it happens to almost yeah. everybody. At some point, you're oh, playing yeah. with somebody, and it's like, what is this dude doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, wait, man, dude. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chill. <laughs> but you can't stop doing the set, though, right? It, yeah, yeah. You know, that I mean, destroys everything if you And you start. don't want to say anything either, because, you know. Yeah. I, oh, man. That, it's it a whole other vibe. <laughs> it, it, it must be so. And, and I guess in my own little way, I'm envious of people who can play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With that yeah. all comes around who's going to call who mm -hmm. next time. Right. Right, exactly. Because I've gotten calls for gigs where I've sat in with people and I played with them. Mm -hmm. And the bass player that they use, mm -hmm. you know, is way better than, uh, you know, he knows all the songs better than I do. So right. he's, he's perfect for there. Right. But the responsibility part, you got to be there on time, you got to oh, have yeah. a car, you got to mm -hmm. have gear. Yep. You know, when they slack on that part, then it's like, Call Steve. Call Steve. <laughs> Always call Steve. Because Steve will be here. And he yeah. knows the music. Steve well, I'll will... try to learn it, you know, the best I can. I'm learning songs all the time and forgetting songs all the time. Yeah, well, <laughs> because that's okay. Because you can play and you're good. So what I want to do now for the last couple of minutes, mm -hmm. I want to hear and I want the audience to hear you play. Okay, I'll play a song this uh, Sparkle from the Sparkle CD. Okay. Thank you.
talent and the emotion um, that goes into you playing, man, mm -hmm. you are good. I thank you for appreciating me. And man. I'm not even saying that yeah. because you're sitting on my show. Yeah. You are good. <laughs> I mean, if you appreciate music, if you love music, if you, if music moves you, mm. to me, there's nothing better than music like that. It right. moves you because you can feel it coming through the artist. Oh, thank you. So, we that, got, we got to consider smooth jazz. <laughs> <laughs> That's one form of it. That's one form. <laughs> Whereas you're playing little but, jazz. But, but that's that's not cookie cutter to me. Mm -hmm. You know that's that has yeah. that has some bite by, behind it. Oh, thank you. You know, and uh, we're gonna end the show. But you got to come back after oh, you do yeah. your thing. We got to come back. To, man. Uh, you know, and and hopefully you can bring. We can have somebody else with songs. you and, yeah, and just have nice. some. Be nice to have the whole band. Yeah, you know, I'm talk. Like I'll talk for about five minutes and let you guys do your thing. You know. Deal. All right? Deal. My man. Promise. Thank All you. All right. <laughs> As always, we say God makes, a man makes plans, God smiles. Thank yeah. you guys for joining Spoken Voices. We hope you enjoyed Mr. Steve Clark, and we'll yeah. see you again next episode. Be sure to tune in. Yo, dude, you are good. <laughs>